we're probably gonna be doing two notes on this mobile home. The reason that we're doing two notes is because we wanna potentially sell the first note to recapitalize and get $80,000 that we initially had invested into the property and a small profit. And then the second note, we're gonna keep for cash flow. I'm here with Joe in today's episode. We want to talk about a case study on actually somebody that had come to one of our note classes a few months ago and raised their hand and said, Hey, I have kind of a uh, interesting property that I, I can't really sell it. It's a mobile home. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It was actually out in Ravina. I hadn't even heard of Ravina to be honest, but I looked it up and I said, wait a minute, this is only 30 minutes from my house. And initially the numbers were a little off. Usually properties, the further they're away from major cities, the bigger discount that you need to get because you really don't know the market and the buyer pool just goes down. Most people want to stay as close to a major city as possible because usually that's where work is. So they're willing to make a commute. It's just how big of a commute. Usually from my experience, 45 minutes is kind of that threshold where if it gets past 45 minutes to their job, they, they probably going to say no to that particular property. This particular property, we found it through our community, somebody that came to one of our events and uh, was essentially a wholesaler, a wholesaler and, and real estate agent. Right. So I looked at the initial numbers and I said, you know, we really need to be probably somewhere in here in this number because it was two acre property with an old mobile home in the eighties. That was a single wide. And as you guys know, older mobile homes practically almost can get financing for those types of properties. It's mostly of just private owner financing that happens. So we were able to buy that property for, if I'm not mistaken, 70, $70,000. And, um, the wholesalers were able to make $10,000, right? So they were extremely happy. Obviously they made $10,000. And then for us, we kind of looked at, okay, what are we going to have to do to this property to kind of clean it up, renovate it? So we actually uh, got a dumpster. There was a lot of trash left in one of the garages and debris. So I had to pay for a dumpster and demo, um, clean up, trash haul off. And then also uh, the plumbing underneath the house was old and uh, the previous homeowner had probably done it themselves. So we had to actually hire uh, one of our plumbers to go out there and replace all the water lines underneath the mobile home. There was just clean up some maintenance in the HVAC, make sure that was uh, running and functioning correctly. So for the most part, I think rehab um, was overall probably under 10K. So all in, you're at about 80K. So we're about 80K into the to this property. And what's right. the ARV? So the ARV is actually somewhere around $160,000. 160 minus 80, 80. So we basically are only in about 50 cents on the dollar. And uh, we just didn't know the market. That's why based on the numbers, I feel like we should have got for it. So what me and Joe did is I said, we, we should be able to get $160,000. It's still an affordable house. It's on two acres. People can build off of it, replace the mobile home, build their own home, whatever the case may be. There's a lot of options. So me and Joe went out there one weekend and we put about half a dozen bandit signs across um, the, the nearest city, which is Bonham, which is only seven to 10 minutes away. So we put some bandit signs at Walmart. We put some bandit signs at the local um, Panaderia, which is a local uh, Hispanic bakery and, and uh, meat market. Pretty much, uh, I think, a tractor supply, just some of the major traffic areas. Right. And uh, it's kind of funny because we met, made a bet on how many calls we were going to get. And we actually got um, a pretty high number amount of calls on it. And there was one particular business owner that really wanted this property. She was hounding me and said, I don't have as much of a down payment as you guys are asking initially, but can we work something out? So make a long story short, we were able to come together with getting a basically a 10% down payment. So the sales price on this particular uh, property is going to be $160,000. They're putting 10% down, right? Which is around $17,000. So we're probably going to be two, doing two notes on this, on this mobile home. The reason that we're doing two notes is because we want to potentially sell the first note to recapitalize and get the $75,000, $80,000 that we um, initially had invested into the property to get all that back and a small profit. And then the second note, we're gonna keep for cash flow. So property's worth $160,000. If you as a lender and or hard money or just lender in general, would you be comfortable buying a, a note, for example, let's say at 60 cents on the dollar. The risk just gets minimized because if something were to happen, you know 
that you're going to be able to sell that property um, for probably 70 cents on the dollar um, worst case scenario. Well, I was the lender to buy the property. Right. Funds for that purchase, that $70,000, came out of a Quest self-directed Roth account. And so any profits that, that I make will be tax-free right. from the Roth account. Right. Go Quest. Go Quest. Shout out to Quest. Yeah, although there will be fees that I have to pay them. In the grand scheme of things, it's 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 minimal, right? So we have you, we have a couple of options that we have discussed. Number one, we're going to sell the the first uh, lien. So for those of you guys that want something that's above average return, this is probably going to be somewhere. Um, you know, we'd have to discuss it, but somewhere in the ballpark of ten percent rate of return on this. Yeah. Right. That's going to be the yield on this particular note. Um, so. We can probably uh, do that so you can recapitalize or you might even just switch it to where um, instead of getting that, those funds back, you're going to own that first lien and you're going to get the cash flow in your IRA account. More cash flow is always helpful in times of heavy inflation like we have. So we're obviously doing all the proper things that we instruct and, and we show you guys how to do is just get an RMLO, make sure you get a note servicer. Make sure it's a quality borrower. And this particular story on this borrower is they're a small business owner that is, you know, actually she owns uh, two other homes. She owns her, her homestead that she bought when she was 18, 19 years old. That's almost paid off. She owns an, an, an additional rental house. And um, the bank obviously just wouldn't be able to finance her because just the, um, you know, small business problems, which is income variability. Right. The income uh, going up and down, inconsistency, taxes and things of that nature. They tax, they, you know, use a lot of write-offs and whatnot. So they're going to be really grateful and excited to, to, to have this. They uh, are pushing to move in early. They're yeah. so excited to have this property. So this particular uh, property, we're actually closing the middle of this month, uh, May 15th. So that'll be out there for you guys. If you're interested and you want more information, Go ahead and you can respond to uh, to our email or just reach out to us with our information below. Um, now, there's no such thing as a perfect borrower. In this particular case, um, her credit score came in a little bit lower right. than we're used to. And so she's got all these strengths and that one weakness in her profile. Right. But they are a dual income family. Uh, they work very hard. Uh, we just um, upped the uh, mortgage rate a little bit to compensate right. for that low credit score. The other good thing about this note, Joe, is that the schedule, the amortization schedule, is actually uh, 10 years. Right. I wish she'd have done 15 to give herself a little bit of leeway right. if she needs it, but she wasn't having it. Yeah. She's aggressive, a real go-getter. The type of business owner that you just root have for. to root for. Yeah. I love America. I love America. All right. So we'll uh, catch you guys on the next case study. If you're interested in, in, in an opportunity, just reach out to us. Thank you, guys.